Our current understanding about the timeline for reionization is that it started at the end of the Dark Ages, around 150 million years after the Big Bang. At that time, extremely strong ultraviolet radiation was produced, with enough intensity to drive the electrons out of their orbits around protons across vast volumes of space. Light absorption by hydrogen atoms ceased, and light started to travel across the universe. In this simulation, the dark regions are filled with hydrogen atoms. The light areas have been ionized, and light can travel through it with minimal losses. Over time, the ionized regions around stars cleared entire galaxies, and ionized regions around galaxies cleared entire galaxy clusters. This process ended around 1.1 billion years after the Big Bang, with all of space cleared for light travel. In order to better understand how this reionization actually worked, the James Webb Space Telescope was built with infrared capabilities designed to observe this process that began 13 billion years ago. Here's an image taken by Webb in 2023. There are more than 20,000 galaxies in this field. The hyperluminous quasar J0100 plus 2802 is at the center. It is one of the most luminous quasars known. Its supermassive black hole is 10 billion times more massive than our Sun. Its redshift is 6.327. That gives us the distance the light traveled to reach us at 12.8 billion light years. A deep study of this area was conducted by the Emission Line Galaxies and Intergalactic Gas in the Epoch of Reionization Survey, IGER for short. The survey used Webb's two near-infrared camera modules, each with a 2.2 by 2.2 arc-second field of view. Here's their exposure map around the quasar. The study covered 117 galaxies within 650,000 light years of the quasar. Some are closer to us than the quasar and some are further away. All these galaxies existed near the end of the era of reionization. As Lyman alpha emitters, they will all be sending Lyman alpha photons our way. As the photons pass through volumes of molecular hydrogen, we would see Gunn-Peterson troughs. As they pass through space with smaller volumes of molecular hydrogen and smaller volumes of ionized hydrogen, we would see a mix referred to as Lyman-alpha forests. As they pass through large volumes of ionized hydrogen, we'd see normal emission lines. The survey clearly shows that the expected transparent regions do exist around galaxies. The results showed that galaxies near the quasar had fully ionized the gas within a 2 million light year radius. That's approximately the same distance as the space between the Milky Way and Andromeda. And it showed that the ionization volumes increased over time as the light approached the expected time frame for the fully ionized and transparent universe we have today. But the timeline doesn't explain what radiation ionized the hydrogen, and it doesn't explain how any Lyman alpha photons created early in the reionization epoch could have ever reached Earth. <laughs>